Hey guys, this is Bear, and today we're going to talk about the bubble sword. So the bubble sword is not necessarily the best approach for a person to take when they're trying to sort a collection of items, but it's really a good way for beginning computer science students to get an idea of how sorting is supposed to work. Conceptually, what we have with a bubble sort is just a way to make a pass through a collection of items and then end up with a completely sorted list. Let's imagine, for instance, that we have uh, a collection of numbers in a list like so. What we want to do is ultimately get to this result of a sorted list, which in this case would be 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 9. The question of a sort in this particular case is how do we make it from A, A being our first array, and B being our second, to B? Well, one very particularly naive approach that one could take would be a bubble sort. What we would do is make a pass and compare two elements at a time. So in this scenario, we'd look at five and six, compare them, and go, no, nothing needs to change here. Those are in the right order. And then we would move on and look at these two and say, okay, are they in the right order? Again, these are in the correct order and nothing would need to change. We would continue making this approach until we encountered two elements in the array that did need to change. In this particular scenario, one and nine are not in the correct order. What we would want to do in our algorithm is replace them, swap them, right? So once we do that, we just keep rolling through and compare three and nine. These, like the other, are out of order. So what we would do is form a swap on these as well. Keep moving along, compare 9 and 2, those are out of order, so what we want to do is erase those and swap them in the array. What you'll see is that we get completed with one single pass through this collection and end up with the last element matching the last element of the sorted list, which is our ultimate goal here. So we just keep doing this. So at this point, you'll see we actually arrive at a sorted list. But if we continue to check, over and over again, we can certainly determine that each pair individually is complete. One way to know when you have a sorted list with a bubble sort is whenever you make a complete pass through the list and all pairs are in order. That means that you have a sorted list. So this is one optimization that you can make as you roll through the list. Now, another thing you might have noticed as we worked our way through this is that after our first pass, the first rightmost element was actually identical to that of the sorted list. And after two passes, our highest element was in the second most position, and so on. So what we actually end up with is this partitioned section of what would be a valid sorted list and then another section of what would be the piece of the list that's still left to be sorted. So in effect, what you end up doing is taking higher level elements and bubbling them up one at a time until you end up with the sorted list taking the complete array. And I'd like to just talk for one second about what makes this particular algorithm so inefficient. And it's gonna be the number of passes that you have to take. So now imagine if I have to make a pass and look at two elements, and then I make 
continue my pass, look at two elements, right? I do this, that's going to be one pass would be n, the number of elements in my collection, right? If I continue to do this for each element that I have in the collection, I'm going to do that n times n times, which would give me a worst case scenario of n squared. In a case where I had six elements, I'm going to end up making potentially 36 passes in order to end up with a sorted list. Now, a computer can do 36 passes pretty easily, but if I'm trying to sort a larger list, this is obviously going to be a problem because this number, n times n, is going to grow very fast. It'll grow exponentially. Hey guys, so let's go ahead and start off with our C-sharp example here. The very first thing you're gonna wanna do in order to have a sorting algorithm is to start with an unsorted list. So let's just make a quick function here to return a collection of unsorted integers. So what we want to do is go ahead and get an unsorted list of numbers using our new list and we'll just say let's make get 20 uh, 20 elements long let's also go ahead and print that out to the console just to prove that it works uh, what would work really well for this is going to be the string dot join function so you can just give this a separator and then you can give it a, a list and that will write it out to the console. So what we should end up with is a 20 element list of unsorted numbers printed out to the console in a comma separated list. It looks like that is exactly what we ended up with. So we've got our list that's unsorted. What we wanna do is make n number of passes and compare each element to the next element in the list and then swap them if that's the case, if they're out of order. So obviously what we need to do right off the bat is start off with a loop that goes unsorted list dot link that goes over the entire collection. And what we'll want to do in this loop is compare two elements at a time. So we'll say element A1 is going to be unsorted list at element i, the zeroth element, and then element two would be that at i plus one. What we'll want to do though, if we're going to take this approach, is be sure to stop early because if we don't, if we run through the entire list, we'll get to the last element and attempt to grab something that's out of bounds for that particular array. Now that we're here, let's just do a quick check to make sure that we're comparing the right things. So sure enough, we should be comparing 97 and 31 at the same time, 31 and 80, 90 and 93, all looks well. We get out to our very last one, which should be 2 and 34, and it looks like we are indeed there. Our comparison is now working like we'd expect. The next step is going to be actually comparing those two elements and then making a swap if they're out of order. So what we want to do is say if element 1 is greater than element 2, go ahead and swap those. What we should say in this particular case is unsorted list at i should be set to element 2. 
an unsorted list at i plus 1 should be set to element 1. That will, in effect, swap the two elements. Let's go ahead and write our list again at the end and see how it looks. After one pass, it looks like we indeed did take the highest element here, 96, and move it all the way out to the right. What we just need to do now is apply n more passes and we should end up with a sorted list. Let's go ahead and wrap this in one more loop so that the list might actually be sorted after the required number of passes. We'll take the naive approach first. The maximum possible number that it might take in order to sort this list. And then we'll look about how we might improve this or optimize it. Let's go ahead and run it. And we should end up with a perfectly sorted list. If we look, here's our initial list here on the top row. And then here's our sorted list on the bottom. 1, 2, 12, 14, etc. It all appears to be sorted as we might expect. Let's go ahead and take a look at two potential ways that we can optimize this. First off, our outer loop here, where we just go the length of the list over and over again, means that we might be making passes on an already sorted list. If I got a list of 20 elements that was unsorted, sorted, or whatever, I would always end up making 400 passes with this particular algorithm, 20 times 20. What if I ended up getting a sorted list as an input? In that case, my algorithm should hopefully be smart enough to know, oh, I don't actually have to do anything here. What we want to do is only continue to make passes if the previous pass had to swap elements. We know that if we went and made a complete pass and we didn't have to swap anything at all, that we already have a sorted list. In this scenario, what we want to do is add a new variable to track the state of whether we've swapped, whether we've swapped any values or not. We'll go ahead and start this off to be false, and then anytime we swap a variable, we'll set it to true. And for our initialization of any particular pass, we'll also set it to false, just to clear it out, right? And then what we'll want to do is change our for loop to a do while loop and say, while we've had to swap something, continue doing the next thing. And we need a swimming colon there. And what we should see, I guess we don't actually technically have to initialize that. We could take this approach here. But what we'll end up seeing is that this actually completes in less passes than the previous versions. And so we should still end up with a sorted list just like we did before. But now we know that it should be finishing faster. Uh, we could count this, but what I'd like to do is just add a console.write line here as a means to demonstrate the list sorting. And what we should see is that in some cases it's longer, and in some cases it's a little shorter. But if we give it a sorted list, and we'll just go ahead and rely on the .NET Frameworks implementation of sort here, it shouldn't make more than one pass in order to finish this. And you'll see, indeed, that's what it does. There's our initial list, completely sorted. There's our first pass. And then there's our algorithm saying, OK, I'm done. Here's a sorted list. Perfect. So that optimization saves us a ton of time. So that's one optimization we can do. But the other also needs to make sure that we don't iterate over each element of the list too many times too. 
what we observed whenever we were looking at this conceptually is that the last element after our first pass was sorted into the correct position and after we did two passes we had two elements at the end of the collection that were sorted into position. What we want to do is somehow eliminate those from consideration as we make our passes because we know that they're already going to be sorted into the correct position. The thing that we want to do here is to manipulate the length or the, the number of elements that can be considered in each pass. Add another value and we'll initialize this because this is valid for our first pass. Uh, we can go ahead and call this n. Not really a great name for this variable. But what we'll want to do is initialize it to be the length of the list minus 1. And then instead of sorting to that value here, or instead of making a pass to that value, what we'll end up doing is making a pass to n. And then after each pass, we can reduce n by 1. So this concludes our example in C Sharp of how to implement a bubble sort. I'm going to go ahead and post this example on our website uh, just in case you guys want to look at the source code for it uh, or copy and paste it and do whatever you need to do with it. So we're starting off with the bubble sort, but I would like to get into other algorithms as we move forward. We'll touch on insertion sort, merge sort, quick sorts, and some of the other more common approaches that you might learn in a data structures or algorithms class in the future. So keep an eye out uh, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing that stuff come up in the future. And if you want to see topics about other things, go ahead and make a comment down below and let us know what you want to hear about.